Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Antoine, this is Henry, and today we are going to present to you our work for Gecko 2021, which we titled Generalized Jump Functions. This is a joint work with Benjamin Dorer, and we all come from Ecole Polytechnique in France. Uh, this presentation will go down in two main parts. First, we'll introduce and explain a new benchmark functions we introduced for evolutionary algorithms and why we did it. And in a second time, we'll study three specific evolutionary algorithms and see how they cope with our new generalized jump functions. So uh, first, let's precise the framework of our study. We will be interested in a pseudo Boolean optimization. That is to say that we take a fitness function f from 0, 1 to the power of n, that is to say the set of all uh, strings of n bits to some ordered sets, and we want to find one of its global maximum. Obviously, the great variety of such fitness functions is so big that uh, we cannot expect to have full um, theoretical results on ab all abstract fitness functions. And this is why the community has decided over the year to focus on a few simple fitness functions that altogether give good understanding of what happens with randomized such heuristics. We'll be concerned today with one of those benchmark functions, uh, or more precisely this uh, class of benchmark functions, the jump gate benchmark functions. Uh, we give you a formula on the top of the slide and a graphic re representation on the right. Uh, firstly, you can observe uh, why a jump K is so interesting. It's because it's one of the few multimodal benchmark in the theory. A multimodal meaning that there exists local optima, which are not the global optima. Here, they are easy to spot on jump K. It's all the points with fitness n minus K. And so, uh, uh, consequently, when you run an algorithm on jump K and study its runtime theoretically, you get good guarantees and good evaluation on how this evolutionary algorithm deals with local optima in general and so how it will deal with it on real life problems and this is why it is quite interesting uh, however we believe there is one flaw with jmk it's its particular structure when you're stuck on the local optima the only option for you to increase in fitness is to directly go to the global optima and so you have to sample it in some kind of perfect jump which is very unlikely and we believe it is unfortunate and could lead to some trouble when understanding uh, truly what happens on local optima, because it's not representative of, of most real life's uh, local optima. Uh, to get rid of this problem, we propose a new version of the jump K, which we call jump K delta. So we keep parameter K to represent the Hamming distance between the local optima and the global optimum, but we introduce a new parameter delta, which you can see on the chart, that encodes the size of the value, that is to say the number of fitness layers who have their fitness switched, uh, if I can say so. So delta can be any value smaller than k, and in particular, the fitness gap can be any distance from the global optimum. The first comment you could make when saying this, and that would be wrong, is that jump k delta is simple because it's just jump delta followed by one max, like jumping over this delta valley and then finishing off with a gentle clamp. Uh, this is false because you have to keep in mind that a point on this representation does not encode an individual, a single string, but rather an entire layer of points. And so uh, the point that are just after the value on this representation have much more points than uh, the global optimum. You can do the math actually and see that when you're stuck on the local optima, instead of having just one improvement in fitness as you had with MK, now you have this sum of binomials, which is obviously much bigger, and we, we thought that would be interesting to see uh, how that changes the behavior of some evolutionary algorithms. And this is what we will uh, jump in right now. So the first uh, algorithm we wish to study here is called the one plus one evolutionary algorithm with fixed mutation rate. What does that mean? Uh, this is the simplest evolutionary algorithm you could think of. First, we fix a mutation rate P, which is a constant real number between zero and one. We then sample uniformly at random a, uh, an individual X uh, consisting of N bits. That will be our uh, starting individual. And we will then, then repeat uh, the following process. From X, we generate an offspring, an offspring Y by using what we call standard bit mutation of uh, strength P. That is, we flip each bit in X with probability P. Uh, and this algorithm is uh, elitist, so if uh, if the child uh, Y has better fitness than its parent uh, X, then we keep Y. Otherwise, we uh, delete Y and continue working with X. Uh, and we do this uh, as long as we, as we want. So for example, until we reach the global optimum. 
this algorithm is uh, very simple and has been studied extensively. Uh, so studies uh, of its runtime, so the number of iterations you need to reach the global optimum, uh, has uh, been done by uh, Doer, McMaral, uh, and Nguyen in 2017 on the John K benchmark. Their result states that the asymptotic best mutation rates for this benchmark is P equals K over N, where K is the distance between the layer of local optima and the global optimum. This gives uh, the following expected runtime, and any deviation from this value of P will lead to an exponential loss. So how does this generalize on our version of the, uh, uh, of the benchmark, so on John K Delta? This is very hard to study uh, very precisely, so we need to introduce uh, a new condition on K. So we suppose that K is a small o, little o of uh, cubic root of N. We call this domain the standard regime. If uh, we are in the standard regime, then we have the following result. The asymptotic best choice for P is delta over n, where delta is the size of the jump. And the expected runtime is uh, stated as follows. And we also generalize the result that any deviation from that optimal value will lead in a exponential loss on the runtime. So observant eyes will have seen that this uh, is essentially the same runtime as uh, for the run on jump k, uh, only divided by a binomial coefficient, uh, k choose delta. And the optimal mutation rate is the same in the sense that it is the size of the value divided by n. So we're happy because we get this uh, binomial speed up that we were expecting. Now a second algorithm that uh, is a variation upon the one plus one evolutionary algorithm, and that was introduced by Doer and collaborators in 2017, is the following, the fast evolutionary algorithm. Uh, it relies on uh, randomness in the choice of the mutation rate. So the value of P will now change uh, depending on the iteration you're looking at, and it will uh, be sampled using a heavy tailed power law distribution. So P can take values between one over N and n over 2 over n. Uh, this is given by the, for, for the formula you can see here. Keep in mind that beta is a small constant, uh, usually 1.5, and that the first term here is just a normalization constant, so nothing to be worried about. The whole point of this algorithm is that it's uh, robust in the sense that we do not need to know uh, beforehand the size of the gap for it to run uh, in its optimal way. The runtime analysis of the fast uh, evolutionary algorithm has been done by uh, Doer and collaborators in 2017. They've obtained the following results for the expected runtime of the algorithm. It is only a small polynomial in K slower than the, uh, uh, the 1 plus 1 EA with optimal mutation rate. Uh, now, our results is a generalization on the John K delta benchmark. Uh, we provide the fact that for K in the standard regime, uh, the expected optimization time satisfies the formula here, which is essentially the same as on jump k, only we replace k by delta, still coherent because this is the size of the gap. Uh, and uh, if you follow this well, you'll see that the expected runtime here is also divided by k choose delta compared to uh, the one uh, up top. Uh, so it's still slower than the optimal 1 plus 1 EA, but only by a, a small polynomial factor. But the, the, this speed up does not always occur. Exactly. So now we'll move on to a third algorithm, the randomized local search with rubber stagnation detection, or for short, LDRLS star. And we'll see that the K choose delta speed up does not happen on this one, which we believe is quite interesting. So uh, this algorithm is much more recent. It was introduced in, in 2021. And to understand how it works, we'll have to develop two new ideas. First one is quite standard. It's called randomized local search. It's a scheme of mutation, so it's a different way of obtaining a child from its parents at the core of your algorithms. So instead of using standard bit mutation, as Henry described, you can use randomized local search. So you fix a R, which we call the strength, and you flip R bix exactly at random, and this gives you the offspring, which is obviously a nicer to analyze uh, when you want to do theory afterwards. Uh, the second idea uh, is much more important. It's called stagnation detection. It's a heuristic that was introduced precisely to deal with local optimum. So the idea is to run your algorithm just like you would with some one plus one EA, starting using strength one, as long as it works. 
But if at some time you are stuck uh, spending for too much time uh, without increasing in fitness, then it might mean that there is no improvement at distance one or else you would have found it. So you move to strength two. And if the same thing happens, you move to strength three, etc. And so you keep uh, searching in the, in the strength space until finding the good one that makes you finally increase in fitness. So intuitively, it is a very natural way of solving the problem and so a very competent algorithm. And we have precise results on GMK, which are frankly quite impressive. So this uh, result was obtained by Rajabi and Witt in 2021. Uh, it is a precise runtime of SDLS star on the GMK benchmark function. Uh, obviously, the, the formulas may not be very enlightening, but you can remember what's in orange at the bottom of the slide. Uh, SDRLS star is faster than the optimal one plus one EA by a factor that is constant between one and three. Uh, this is all the more impressive that just like for fast, you do not need to know the uh, size of the gap and you can still do better than the uh, one plus one EA with optimal mutation rate. However, uh, surprisingly and spectacularly, this does not generalize at all on GMK delta. We were able to, to find using standard uh, analysis techniques uh, under mild, uh, mildly uh, restrictive conditions on K and delta, a precise asymptotic runtime for SDLLS star on our new benchmark, GMK delta. Uh, the formula may not be very enlightening either, but uh, you can, I think, feel that this will be much, much larger than what we used to see with Henry. And indeed, we're able to show that within the standard regime, you can find a lot of instances of instances of the GMK delta problem, such as the expected runtime of SDRLS star is bigger than the expected runtime of the basic one plus one EA, that is to say, not even the optimal one, the basic one by a factor that is polynomial of any degree. So it's, we believe it's, it's absolutely amazing because the SDRL star, which was the best algorithm on jump K by a decent margin, uh, has its rest time not divided by KH's delta on jump K delta. And as a consequence, it becomes very, very slow in comparison to other algorithms. So the supremacy is shuffled in some way, which we believe is absolutely uh, interesting. Because, for example, if somebody uh, were to uh, use evolutionary algorithms to solve a problem in industry, uh, just referring to the literature on JMK, they would probably choose SDRS star, which could be, uh, in fact, a very bad idea. So you can see this with the experiments. Uh, if you look at SDRS star, which is the uh, curve in purple here, uh, keep in mind that every single uh, uh, point is the, the average of 1,000 runs of the algorithm. So uh, on this instance, which is jump K, uh, because K equals delta equals four, we can see that SDRLS is really the uh, the master uh, algorithm because it beats every single other uh, algorithm we have here. So we've plotted the one plus one EAs with different uh, fixed mutation rates. We can see one over N in uh, black is the slowest, then a suboptimal one with a delta over two divided by N, uh, and the optimal one in green, uh, which is better than the blue one and the black one. Uh, we also have the fast evolutionary algorithm in red, and uh, in brown, another algorithm we didn't discuss, which uh, uses only stagnation detection uh, added to the one plus one EA. Now let's see what happens if uh, we enlarge the uh, uh, the benchmark. So if we look at uh, jump K delta, where K is different to delta, uh, and from left to right and top to bottom, we look at instances uh, that have a gap uh, that grows in size and that grows in distance from the uh, global optimum. So what happens here? Uh, the first uh, astonishing uh, thing that happens is that this uh, purple curve, which represented the runtime, uh, the expected run, the runtime, sorry, of uh, uh, SDRLS star uh, skyrockets. So it gets beaten on the first uh, graph uh, by the green uh, optimal one plus one EA with fixed mutation rate delta over N. Uh, and then uh, from the second plot to the fourth plot, uh, you can see that it's uh, it's really much worse than every single other uh, uh, algorithm, ex except uh, for the one plus one EA with uh, fixed condition rate one over n. But this is only because we have small uh, instances of the problem. We can also note that the red curve, which represents uh, the one plus one fast evolutionary algorithm, it's is uh, much more robust because it's uh, uh, it keeps up with the one plus one EA with fixed condition rates. Uh, throughout the uh, expansion of the, uh, uh, the benchmark. Uh, and we can, we can see that uh, the, the fast evolutionary algorithm is much more robust. 
Yes, so as a conclusion, the three main points you can take back home from this presentation, you can pause if you want. The first one is that we proposed a new class of benchmark functions for evolutionary algorithm. Uh, the jump k delta functions are a, we believe, simple and natural generalization of the jump k function, which have the <coughs> advantage of getting rid of uh, the specific structure of jump k, which uh, we felt uh, weird about and were, uh, in the end, uh, right to do. Uh, the second point, the more impressive we believe, is that the hierarchy we had on gem K uh, of runtimes of algorithms is totally different on gem K delta. The most striking and impressive example being that SGLS star, which was the apex algorithm on gem K, uh, is not severely beaten on gem K delta and is much, much slower in comparison to other algorithms. Uh, we obtained theoretical asymptotic results, uh, which uh, were backed up by experiment even on small problem instances. And so on the whole, we believe that those generalized jump functions truly have the potential of bringing, if further investigated, a new and enlightening understanding of how randomized local search deals in, deal in general with a local optima, which of course is one of the main stakes of the theory. We hope that was interesting and well, see you around. Goodbye.